in this lecture we will look into an interesting quantum transport phenomena which is called weak localization which happens in the diffusive quantum transport regime so during this course of this lecture we will look into the phenomenon of coherent backscattering weak localization and uh, weak anti localization all right so as i mentioned this happens in the diffusive quantum transport regime where the inelastic scattering length and the dimension of the system both are much larger than the fermi wavelength and the elastic scattering length and this phenomena happens in the in a two dimensional system which exhibit diffusive quantum transport and this is also used as a tool to characterize the inelastic scattering length or stress breaking length in two dimensional systems now let us consider that you have a system with lot of scattering points for the electrons there are many many scattering centers okay now let's consider for example the propagation of the electron waves from the point 0 to point 7 okay so we are looking at one particular instance where electron is starting at a point which is labeled 0 and after scattering it may after many scattering it reaches the point 7 so as you can see from the diagram from this cartoon there are many many paths the electron can take from 0 to 7 for example i have labeled seven possible out of many seven possible paths one goes from point 1 to 7 point 2 to 7 point 3 to 7 point 3 6 to 7 okay and so on okay there are many many 0 5 and 7 okay 6 and 7 and there are also paths where it actually can undergo multiple scattering between points for example here these are 017 027 0467 but you can also have 042 again 4 again 2 again 4 again 5 6 4 7 in random is completely random manner you can actually can go undergo a lot of scattering events and reach 0.7 eventually and that is true for the electron shuttling between any two points this is just an example where we have considered point 0 as a starting point and point 7 as a end point okay and as the end point now these are quantum transport phenomena so the probability or the total probability of the electron starting from 0 and reaching 7 is actually sum of all these probabilities which are given by this wave functions psi 7 you you are going sum j psi j the psi j is the probability for this electron to take the jth path and j are enormous in number so this each of these j is given by some tj that is the transmission probability through that path or you can say that is the amplitude of that path and exponential i phi j is the phase term how much phase that that the wave is going to accumulate once it reaches the stable between start and end point through that particular path okay this this is the wave function and the probability is basically the square of this wave function so p7 
is the probability from 0 to 7 is square of this wave function here okay so this term and that is the square of this term here is sum and then square not square and sum because this is a quantum system where you have to sum the amplitude then you square it so when you do that you are going to get the square of each of the path when you when i say square you have to take the complex conjugate and basically multiply with that so when you take the complex conjugate or the exponential term e to the power i phi j and minus i phi j form they will all sum becomes one and you will left with tj square then there are closed terms where t of you are actually summing two path and taking the square of that okay and all those will look like this okay now there are n number of paths and this phase is the phase difference is going to vary very drastically between path to path what that means is when i sum this over this cos phi j minus phi k all those sum will eventually go to zero because there are so many paths for this okay there are so many uh, highly it's a fastly oscillating term phi j minus phi k so it's a rapidly varying term from path to path so the sum of all these for j is not equal to k will go to zero that means you will get the probability as this p7 as sigma j tj square okay that is the probability of reaching 7 from 0 summed over all the possible path okay so with that picture let us look at what is the probability of coherent backscattering backscattering means it is the return probability okay it's a return probability what happens if the initial and final points are same in actuality it doesn't need to be exactly the same point those if those two points are actually separated by distance less than the elastic scattering length we are okay okay because then the wave function is you can think of like it is uh, spread over in that in that small uh, distance so we, we can we don't need what I am trying to say is we don't need to consider that it is zero to zero. You can have a small another point which is very nearby that is also almost like return probability. Okay, but let us consider the exact uh, point. Okay, so let's look at what is the probability for one of the path, say J path. Okay, zero to zero. That means starting from zero and you are reaching zero and there are two possibilities for every path that is one is the clockward clockwise one is anti-clockwise or one is the you can think of one is forward one is the reverse there are two paths which connects the same set of points that means the pj the probability is tj squared tj plus square and tj minus square one represent the clockwise and one represent the anti-clockwise okay then the closed term phi cos phi j minus phi i okay so there are two possibilities right what that means let me also introduce or say here that tj plus and tj minus you can assume they are same because the so scattering or transmission probability doesn't really change whether you are propagating in the clockwise direction or in the anti-clockwise direction this is just for uh, symmetry argument you can think that these two are actually same tj plus and tj minus are same and this is um, then so you don't need to worry about the difference here so you, ha you have two paths t cos phi, phi j and phi j i should put a plus here and i should put a minus here phi j and plus and minus okay that is missing okay there. so this one is actually the, the phase change whether you go clockwise or whether you go anti-clockwise you are at the same point and the total phase accumulated whether in both, in both directions is actually same what that means is this term phi j minus phi k is 0 
for the overall this term it becomes 1 okay what that means is this this term pj 0 to 0 that is actually for tj square now this is written probability considering one path now if you consider all the probability you have to sum it over and for sigma j tj square so now what you are seeing here is there is substantial probability for this comeback okay that is four times tj square okay amplitude of propagation but there is a four times probability of for that electron to return to same point what that means is the forward propagating and the reverse propagating they undergo constructive interference that is that's what that's what happening when you have phi j minus phi j plus and j minus are same the same phase which are goes this way and the coming back this way they actually undergo constructive interference and the electron sets up a undergoes some kind something like a localization it is localized in that path one part and there are multiple paths so you can say that the electrons are actually kind of localized in all the path the forward propagating and the reverse propagating paths those undergo constructive interference and they are localized and this phenomena or this situation is called weak localization and this is actually a quantum mechanical effect so what is the effect here the effect is the coherent backscattering leads to an increased probability for the electrons to come back. Okay, that is this one. There is a probability for to come back to the same point. Okay, there is a substantial probability. And that is because the time reversed twin paths undergo constructive interference and form a standing wave, causing a reduction in the conductivity. So the electron otherwise supposed to go forward. This is going to play a little bit of spoiled sport for the electron to get localized in the system. Okay, that is going to basically reduce the conductivity, and this is a quantum mechanical effect. So this is a this is something like you can think as a quantum correction. It's a quantum correction to the classical conductivity or resistivity. That is what weak localization is okay now let us look at how are we going to see this effect or what if what situation or what behavior the transport will exhibit when you have weak localization or when you have diffusive quantum transport in the system okay so again the we are talking about two direction clockwise and anti clockwise and you cannot you need to basically they undergo constructive interference somehow you have to break it you want to break that then you will not have the constructive interference then you will expect what is the difference between transport when you have and when you don't have this in constructive interference between the time reversed path or the localized localization okay so when you apply magnetic field and that is the recipe we have okay how to detect it you are going to apply magnetic field classically you cannot think of such a situation because classically if you apply magnetic field the particle get deflected in opposite direction when you have velocities reversed that means forward propagation will have one direction we just say it, is, it, is, it has one k vector and reverse propagation has another k vector, but they get actually uh, deflected in opposite direction, and you don't have you, it's, it's, you they, those paths doesn't coincide at all. Okay. Now the quantum mechanics. We know that magnetic field B basically affects through the vector potential. A. Okay. So magnetic field B is given by del cross A, where A is the vector potential. A is the vector potential.
is vector potential. So the momentum when you have in the, or in presence of a magnetic field is given by mv plus q into a where this is the magnetic field part and q is minus e for electron so mv minus e into a that is the momentum that's the momentum okay now so the, now the k in presence of the magnetic field will get modified by this vector potential term so the, now let's consider the path from 1 to 2 and 2 to 1 the reason i have drawn two points here is as long as these two points are less than the elastic scattering length these two points you can say as far as or less than the uh, lambda f the fermi wavelength you can say those two points are actually spread within one wavelength within one wavelength so those two points you cannot distinguish the electrons cannot distinguish those two points because they are the same point because they are separate only by lambda f the wavelength of the the de Broglie wavelength of the electron okay and they cannot separately scatter between one and two because they are those two points are much much uh, you know closer than the elastic mean free path Li. that is why it drew one and two separately but this discussion here is unaffected it will be unaffected even if we consider one and two the same point okay this is a general picture now the phase difference when you go from 1 to 2 is 1 to 2 k dot dl k is a wave vector and uh, so that you have k is mv by h bar so m into vf okay that is because that is the velocity fermi velocity because all the transport happens at the fermi level so fermi velocity and mv by mv by h okay that's what you have okay now similarly you also have this um, um, vector potential term e by s okay now this is the phase change because of the normal propagation and this is the phase change because the vector potential presence of vector potential a dot dl okay now you can this is like a closed loop okay because one and two are so close it's a closed loop so this term here you can basically replaced by something called del cross a okay because a integral 1 to 2 a dot dl is same as the area integral del cross a okay they are same so when you do that what you have is this is your phase change because of the propagation the absence of the field and this is because of the field okay and what you can get is you'll get 2 pi e v dot ds okay a dot dl becomes del cross a dot ds but del cross a is the magnetic field b that becomes b dot ds okay and you are going to get 2 pi e by h eventually okay now that is for 1 to 2 so 
when the electron takes a path from 1 to 2 in one direction, you get this. In the other direction, when 2 to 1, this is going to remain, this thing will remain unchanged because it will accumulate the same phase, whether it travels in this direction or other direction. But the vector potential is the path and the vector potential are now in opposite direction okay to the previous path okay so a dot dl term will change the sign okay because the vector potential has a specific direction okay so in one way they are in the same direction they are parallel and you reverse the path they are anti parallel so that term will change the sign okay what that means is this phase difference between the forward and reverse propagating one becomes 2 pi e by h phi minus minus 2 pi e by h that becomes 4 pi e by h okay the two waves now grow out of phase with the magnetic field or the flux phi okay so that is what we have so the magnetic field makes the time reverse trajectory dissimilar or out of phase or initially when they are in phase they had constructive interference now as you turn on the field slowly you are going to build a phase difference between those two between the forward and reverse propagating path and the time reverse to undergo start undergoing destructive interference and you will lose that localization okay so that is the effect when you have the field turned on. So what we just saw is that there is a return probability which is given by this term and in the presence of a magnetic field this phase difference delta phi that is phi j plus minus phi j minus that is the phase difference between forward and reverse propagating trajectories okay that is given by this formula here 4 pi e by h into phi 2 pi e by h into phi in one direction and other direction the sign gets reversed so the difference is 4 pi e by h to phi so and the summary is the magnetic field will cause a relative phase shift between the time reverse path which will reduce the weak localization by destroying the constructive interference between the two paths okay and this phi is the flux enclosed in that loop which is given by the field into the area okay what that means is the phase shift for any given field is going to depend on the area but now what is the upper limit for this area okay is there an upper limit so to have the coherence over over an entire path between say 1 to 2 that path length should be substantial or it should be comparable or lower than the phase breaking length L5 okay L5 L5 is the phase breaking length okay so the maximum area the loop can enclose is basically if you assume a rough circular path so s l phi is pi into r square r is l phi divided by 2 pi square so l phi is the circumference divided by 2 pi will give you the radius so this is like pi r square okay this of the form pi r square and this will give the largest phase shift for any given field L5 is going to give you that path is going to give you the largest phase shift. You cannot get anything more than that because when the path is larger, 
Then of course the face is not preserved, so you don't expect any uh, interference between the forward and reverse propagating path because that length path length which is taken over that uh, as a circumference of that area is basically not a coherent transport in that there is no uh, phase uh, you know uh, phase coherence along that path the phase is not preserved okay what that means is trajectories with larger area will enclose in stat statistically larger uh, tra tra trajectories larger length will enclose statistically larger area okay so what that means is the magnetic field the critical field which i am going to define as a field which is going to induce a phase chain delta phi is pi by 2 okay for one path okay and pi by 2 for other path then pi by 2 plus pi by 2 that will be pi that is then they become completely destructive or out of phase okay for one path the pi by 2 the critical field bc is defined as it is going to induce a phase shift of pi by 2 for an area which is defined by the circumference l5 or sl5 the 2 pi e by h sl5 in the bc that is how the critical field is defined now h by e is the phi zero the quantum of magnetic flux okay and the critical field bc is defined as phi zero divided by l phi squared h by e l phi squared okay that is how the critical field is defined okay so what that means is if the alpha is larger then critical field will be lower what that means if you have a large coherence length then the electron trajectory can be phase conserved phase preserved over a larger area then a small field is enough to induce a phase difference because the area or the travel length of the electron is larger but if the phase is not preserved for really large trajectories shorter trajectories then you need a higher field to get the same flux because what we are interested is the is the l s l phi into bc the, the 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 product of the area and the field that is a flux okay so to get the same flux if the area is larger you need only a lower field strength but if the area if the um, shorter area area is lower that is path length is shorter what that means is you need a large field strength to induce the same phase change because the sl5 the s is small so you need a larger b bc okay now here is an example where how the resistance that is how you observe it okay how the resistance changes as a function of magnetic field the effect of weak localization is a quantum correction to resistance or an increase in the resistance or a decrease in the conductivity that means when you measure the resistance as a function of the magnetic field what you are going to get is you are going to get a peak at zero because there you have weak localization then when you vary the field on either direction the paths which actually contribute to the location will grow out of phase and the resistance will decrease okay and that's what you are seeing and of course that weak localization effect is also a function of temperature and that's what's shown here in this work where you can see lower lowest temperature because you have far less number of scattering 
especially contributed by phonon, which has a strong temperature dependent. Okay, so your path length is very large, low temperature. The area is large. Then you need only small field. So to see this peak, then the moment you uh, you need a small field to destroy this effect, the peak will come down drastically within this very small range of field that you can see here itself. But now, when you increase the temperature, you can see this curve is going to get flatter and flatter and eventually very flat. Okay. That means at higher and higher temperature, you need larger and larger field to observe this because your alpha is lower. So from this measurement, you can directly understand two things. Number one, what is the transport regime? Is it the quantum diffusive quantum transport regime or not? Number one. Number two, you can also estimate the phase coherence length L5. Okay. So this is a very interesting neat effect and very simple measurement. We can understand what transport regime we are actually in. Okay. Now, there is a twin effect to this that is called weak anti-localization. So, now we have not considered the effect of spin when we discuss weak localization. Okay. Or we have not really considered there is a spin flip. The scattering events are actually not spin flip, spin flip scattering. The spin is preserved over both trajectory, they are same. But now there are special class of materials which are which possess high spin orbit coupling where the spin and the momentum are actually locked. That means if the electron is going in one way, the spin is in one direction, the path is flipped, the spin flips and goes other direction. Okay, so one way you have one spin, other way you have other spin. That means spins are always anti parallel. Okay, in that case, though your conditions of coherence between the reverse and forward propagating path are satisfied, but because of the spin states are opposite, they always interfere destructively. Okay, that means the two paths along one loop, the time reverse path will always interfere destructively. The spin is a magnetic field effect, okay, it is kind of intrinsically magnetic. So it is not going to preserve the symmetry over time reversal, okay. That means you will not have this weak localization, otherwise that should be present. So you will have an increased conductance because at that specific um, uh, condition, when the two paths are directly interfered, you have an enhanced conductivity or a decreased resistance. So that is effect is just opposite of weak localization. The way that is going to figure out in the measurement is you will get an enhanced conductivity or reduced resistance in at zero B field. Then as you increase the field, the rest of things will follow. Okay. So the, the correction of the conductivity is given by this formula where B5 is the phase coherence characteristic field that is the field where your phase coherence is field strength up to the phase coherence is preserved okay and psi is your digamma function and this is this general equation where you need to substitute alpha basically equal to 1 minus 1 for weak localization plus 1 by 2 for anti weak localization that's what this condition is and this follows from an experiment on a topological illustrator bismuth antimony telluride selenide okay bsb tsc2 so here this you have for this topological insulator what you have is you have spin momentum locked surface states where the, the spin and the k or the momentum are actually locked so if you propagate in one direction you have one spin the reverse propagation will have other spin 
So it's already spin split the channels as shown by these two different colored paths. Okay, one corresponds to one spin, other corresponds to other spin. So they always interfere destructively and there is no localization or the, lo the localization which would have been there is lifted because of the spin uh, degenerate is lifted. Okay. So this effect is called weak anti-localization and this is a test to look at whether you have a spin orbit coupling in the system or you can also estimate a spin orbit coupling energy from this one. Okay. And uh, this also tests whether you have surface states such as spin orbit coupled. Okay. Do you do have spin split state? Now all this, uh, this is actually like smoking gun for all this effect. Okay. So now what we have discussed uh, in this lecture so far is the transport in two dimensional system in the diffusive quantum transport regime where we have coherent backscattering which is going to increase the resistance overall resistance which you which is because of the interference of the forward and reverse propagating path which will localize the wave function of electron which should be otherwise propagating in nature and you can lift this effect by the application of a plane uh, play a magnetic field normal to the plane and there is also an associated phenomena which is called weak anti-localization which is a twin phenomena twin effect where there there is an enhancement in the conductivity or reduction in the resistance which is caused by the spin dependent trajectory all right